How many of you have read a book in the last week? How about the last month? Yeah, yeah. Six months? How about 40 years? Right. <laughs> well, that's me. I hadn't read a book in 40 years. And God put on my heart to write a book. Let me start by talking about my childhood. I was raised in Cleveland, Ohio, in a middle class family, Italian American. My, I'm second generation here. Back then, school was very, very difficult for me. I could not read well. I could not absorb. So that meant I did very poorly in testing. I couldn't remember. When I would read something as slow and as hard as it was, I could not remember to be able to pass the test. So all the kids in school made fun of me. You know, hey, this is the dummy. Back then, uh, they didn't know about ADHD. They didn't know about learning disabilities like they do now. And kids can be brutal, as we all know. And it hurt me. It hurt me deeply, you know, to be able, why can't, why can't I get good grades? like the rest of these kids. Why? Why can't I? And uh, I kept those thoughts going. And if it wasn't for my mother, I'd have never got out of high school. I got all D's and F's in school. And back then, they just would push you to the next class just to get rid of you. I'm probably the only guy that went to summer school for 12, I should say, 13 years. Every year I went to school, I had to go to summer school because I just didn't get it. Well, I grow up, and I'm going to say to myself, I'm going to show the world how smart I really am. And I went out and I started my career. I met my beautiful wife in 1986, and her and I started my first company, and we were working out of a pickup truck, and we were changing light bulbs shopping centers, they had those, those lights that go all the way around. We're, we're changing that. By 1993, Patsy and I are doing $25 million. And I got to tell you, most of that credit goes to my wife. She is incredible. But the problem, the problem with that was I was not following the Lord at all. I was following the world, and in that world, I was giving kickbacks to CEOs. I was taking them to strip bars. I was involved with hookers. I was doing all the things that were wrong. I was corrupt, and I didn't think anything of it. I thought, this is the way you do business. This is the way you do business. And I never thought any different. But in the bottom of, in the back of my mind, I knew what things were were not right. In late 1993, like Paul knocked, like God knocked Paul off the horse, he knocked me off the horse. And I mean, he knocked me off the horse. I, I got caught um, giving kickbacks. I was written up in the Wall Street Journal. They said they were going to go after me for the RICO Act. The next thing I know, IRS is in, and they are brutal. And they're asking me, where did all this money go? Where's all this cash going? And I'm lying through my teeth. I am lying through my teeth just to save myself. I did have a great lawyer, thank God, back then. But I didn't, I just kept saying, I don't know. I don't know. And Finally, they, they taxed me, the interest and penalty. They also taxed me corporately because I was a, a C Corp and personally. And I mean, took a lot of my cash flow completely away from me. And on top of that, one of the people I was bribing was a publicly traded company. And when that got out, all the companies that I worked for were publicly traded. So I became a leper and nobody would use my company. And we had to eventually go out of business. But, I could, but during that time, the pressure was so great uh, with the IRS coming in, you know, and, and, and just drilling me. And my, he goes, you know, you could get arrested for fraud. All that's going on in my mind. 
And I ended up in the funny farm. It's so bad it got. And I mean, I was, I was so devastated. Anxiety, I don't know if you know about anxiety, but anxiety grows and it grows, especially when you look to the future. That anxiety just gets greater. It's a, it's a horrible, horrible uh, situation or place to be in. Well, when I was in the funny farm, I was sitting in a group therapy. And all these people are talking and it's my turn. And I go, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm losing my house. I'm losing my Corvette. I'm losing all the property. And the guy goes, wait a minute. He goes, all you've lost is material things. We've lost our minds. And I got to tell you, it was like a bolt of lightning. It's like, oh my God, he's right. He's right. And from that point, I started helping them. And within a week, I was out of there. But when I got out, I didn't know what to do. But I met this guy named Steve Shear. And he brought me to Christ. Thank you. And when he did, and again, you know, he invited me to a Bible study. I said, well, you know, I really don't can't read that well. And he goes, I don't worry about it. You can just listen. <laughs> and boy, did I listen. And uh, when I got saved, my life changed. Everything used to be a blur. But now everything was crystal clear. I knew right from wrong. The Lord put on my heart to call all the people that I did wrong to and apologize. I didn't have a problem doing that. And I did. I followed what he told me to do. And then he tells me, now I want you to tell your wife who didn't deserve this. You got to tell her, I go, Lord, I can't do this. In fact, half kidding, tongue in cheek. I say, Lord, can I tell her while she's sleeping? I mean, I really did not want to tell her. But he convicted me to do that. And I don't suggest that for anybody unless the God tells you to do that. But I'll tell you, I did. And she looked at me, she says, I already knew that. And it hurt. And it hurt our marriage for a while. I can tell you, you, you I, I've got books here that uh, anybody wants a book when they leave can take one. It affected our marriage. But what happened was, I turned my life around. I, 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 I became a follower of Christ. And within maybe three, three and a half years, I became a millionaire again. And uh, it was only by his grace that I did that. And I sold my company. And unfortunately, the guy owed me back money and he couldn't pay it. And I ended up getting back into business. And things were going great. Patsy and I were having a good marriage. You know, we were, we were having some turmoil. But about eight months before Patsy got sick, one of the things that Patsy would always say to me, if I got sick, you'd never help me. And that just stuck with me. But God really healed our marriage in 2005, and I write about that as well in the book. And then, as you know, she got sick in January of 2006, and it's all in the book that you guys can read about. I don't want to take more time than I have to. But, you know, after she was healed and after she picked up the car, it was the words of living the dream. Living the dream. We were, I was really spending more time with Patsy, and it, it, it was wonderful. But I had this thing in my heart the God's saying, You got to write a book. And I'm going, Lord, are you kidding me? But a book, you know, I, I can't do that. I go, I, I haven't written a book in 40 years. I got all these and F's in the school. There's no way. So the Lord, knowing how I am and how I operate, I'm a delegator. So I'm going to find somebody that's going to write the book for me. Well, I never really found the right person. And in 2008, when the market crashed, my broker, my broker called me and said, Ryan, you lost over 70% of your net worth overnight. I, I had, and I take responsibility, I had all my money pretty much in uh, these mortgage roll-ups that they said were insured and all that, and it fell apart. And when that happened and having a bad year in my business, SunTrust called my loan. 
and it gave me six months to find another company, to, another bank to bank with. And Jim Swinsky, I don't know if he's on here, he's a, he's a money broker, and that's when I met him. And he came in, and he found me a bank that was going to take on uh, my loan and also my business. But they wanted to give SunTrust a haircut. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to pay my debts like God tells us to. So I chose not to do that. And in and, and lieu of that, I got in bed with these partners, um, which I should have never done. I, I should have known better. But uh, they had, they got 51%, they satisfied the debt. Uh, I saw, I saw, I saw, it was like a fire cell, but I wanted to stay whole. I wanted to make sure my employees had a place to go to business. We had about 150 employees. So I went ahead and did it. And unfortunately, these guys were crooks. And within about a month or two, um, I owned the buildings and, uh, they weren't going to pay the rent, and I told my gal to pay the rent, and they fired me without giving me any benefits, nothing, none of the agreement. And I had to fight them. And anybody who knows about civil law knows it's a rich man's game. The guy with the deeper pockets always wins. And they did. I had to settle for pennies on the dollar because all the money I had left I used to fight these guys. So now here I am faced. I've been on top of the world, you know. The Lord says, put no gods before me. And one of them is money. So that was how I got through that. Because without, without him, I, I would have got through. You know how many people, they lose everything and they, they end up committing suicide. But I wasn't going to do that. I was going to fight back. And I had a God I knew that would help me. And I went to work for a, a company down in Florida, and uh, I was the, um, uh, the divisional manager of Florida. And uh, one of the other men higher up than me was putting all the debt uh, on my books, and I caught him. And uh, I ended up getting fired for it. And then I go, and another company that, that I knew wanted to hire me, the, they were a wire company, wire line, they wanted to start a wireless business. And uh, I, um, I went to work for them. I, I did really, really good. And within a year, I got all their investment back, and we were making money. But they were using me. They, all they wanted to do is get the, my, my contacts. And ended up, we had a discrepancy, and um, I left there. And I'm going, geez, what's that? All my life, I've always been, I've always been able to earn money and do well. And here I am, keep hitting these walls. And then I meet this guy through somebody. Uh, he wanted me to go with him and start a wireless business, and we would be partners. And I did. And things were going along great, <clears throat> except his thinking was so different than mine. And, and you know, one thing I will tell you: when you get in business with somebody, you better really know. Him. And I didn't agree with what what he was doing and what he wanted to do. So he doesn't talk to me for two weeks. And he comes back and he goes, oh, Ron, he goes, I prayed and I fast. God wants me to buy you out. I go, really? And I, I thought at the time, well, you know, he's just doing that because he's greedy. He wants, he wants it all for himself. And I didn't want any more fighting. I just went ahead and I left. But what I realized is all things come to the good and the glory of the Lord when you love them. And I'm looking back now, I'm thinking maybe God did tell him that because he's got a purpose for me. I got to tell you, gentlemen, I was born for this time, no doubt in my mind, of what I'm about to do. And it's only because of his grace. So I, after I parted, these two companies, one, I, I had a very good name in the industry, in the wireless industry. They called me, hey, Ron, we want you to come to work with us. And I said, well, you know, give me a few weeks. I said, you know, I really need to, to just kind of digest things. After a few weeks, I called both of them. Not once, but twice. Crickets. Crickets. They never answered me. So I'm talking to somebody, and this gal says to me, sounds like God 
why don't you do something different? Like, oh, we have to go to Africa and, and, and be a missionary. And, you know, that's just not me. And I started the thing. And, all, and during all this time, you know, God had been putting it on my heart to write the book. And now he just supercharges it and, and he really starts putting this on my heart. Right, you got to write this book. And I'm going, Lord, there's no way. In fact, in the preface, <clears throat> I say, me write a book, Lord, you got to be kidding me. And I finally surrendered. And the gal that taught Patsy, Patsy had to relearn everything which you'll read in the book. I mean, her brain was completely wiped out. So the teacher that taught her, I called her and I said, would you help me? I have to write a book. <clears throat> and she goes, see, I, she was rolling her eyes over the phone because she knew, <laughs> she knew I had ADHD. And she comes and she starts giving me a crash course in English punctuation. And I'm learning. And she writes in the book at the end, she said the first four chapters, she was pulling her hair out. But I did get it. Eventually I got it. And uh, by his grace, I have a five-star rating on Amazon. Only by his grace. The book is powerful. Uh, and I think it's helped a lot of people. And then he says to me, I want you to write a screenplay. Lord, you got to be you know, Writing a book is like driving a fast car. Writing a screenplay is like flying a jet fighter. It's a whole different ballgame. And again, I call Muriel, who, by the way, is an atheist. How God works, huh? <laughs> so she starts helping me and teaching me how to write a screenplay, which she didn't know. We had this book for dummies. How do you how do you write a how do you write a screenplay? So as she's reading it, we had two books. I'm reading, and she's reading it to me so I can absorb it. I don't absorb well when I read. I'm very visual. So we're doing all this, and we, we took about two months preparation, and I start. It took me four years to write this screenplay. And I want to tell you something. It's good. I mean, it's not just good, it's great. And it's all God. Very seldom does a film out, outdo a book. I think in this case it has. Because God wants people to know that he loves them. He wants people to know that he forgives them. I'm living proof of that, right? Because if God wouldn't have forgiven me, you think you would have bestowed a miracle upon me? I don't think so. And I want people to know that. In the book, I don't talk about my, my, um, my past. In the film, I do. God had put on my heart to put that in. And I know why now. And I look back, and it's something when you look back, why God wanted me to tell Patsy about my infidelity. Because he knew I was going to write. And he knew I was going to put that in the story. And surely I wouldn't want to have to tell her now after all these years. That's how powerful our God is and how much he knows of the future. Now, I know that some of you guys read Freddie. Um, as you know, Freddie uh, became a good friend of mine. We're, we're brothers in Christ. Freddie's got a heart of gold. And Freddie has been able to introduce me to a lot of people from Hollywood, producers, or directly and indirectly. And uh, those contacts have really helped me. But also, there's a, a gentleman I'm hoping to resign, I'm not sure if he's on, named Dean DeGenero, who's a screenwriter. And I was telling you, you know, he's got a great screenplay, too, that we're going to get made. What we want to do, we want to make films that matter. We want to make films that are going to bring hope. We want to make films that are going to bring people to Christ. We want to make high-budgeted films, films that people can relate to. If Hollywood can do it, why can't we? That's right, man. That's right. And we want to be able to make a difference. We have right now my story, where no one else believed, 
I have the sequel already started. Dean has a great screenplay, and he'll, when you see this film, it's going to change the way you think about aliens and UFOs. And he does it in a faith-based way. And then Freddie and I and Dean are now trying to negotiate with a guy that's got a great story that will really, really help the kingdom. To do this it takes money. It takes connections. You know, we all talk about, you know, we want to build the kingdom, we want to do this. Faith without action is dead. And I will tell you this, these films will be made. There's no doubt in my mind. God's already got the person or the people that we're going to need to get this finance. I'm so sure of that. It's in my heart. And I want to tell you that, which I think is really important, anybody that's led by my story and feels God nudging them to, to want to help finance this film, please get a hold of Joel. And get a hold of me. I have a lot of information I can show them. I can tell you that, and I've read this, that films do very well in recession times. And we have, have some attractive incentives that an investor can make a lot of money back if the film is successful. Now, you might want to ask, how are these three guys going to make a film? They've never made a film before. Well, that's where Freddie comes in. Freddie has introduced my screenplay to about seven producers, and they all love it. What we would do is have an executive producer over the whole thing, and he would help manage the process. I also have another guy that I met who works for Marvel Studios as a line producer, and he would, he would manage the first strings to make sure that we do it right. One thing I am is an entrepreneur, and I know how to surround myself with great people. And I just want to tell you this that all things are possible when God's in it. Yeah. I'm living proof of that. There's no way I could have wrote this book or this screenplay without him. And I don't, I don't know why he picked a wretched man like me, but he did. And I'm going to carry out his work, his work. Right now, with COVID, more so than ever, people are looking for hope. We want to give hope to people. We want to give the people that are the lukewarm, and there's quite a few of them, to really see the power of God. We want to see the non-believers come. This is what we're here for. We were born to bring people to Christ. We're all apostles. Whether you bring one, two, or millions, we're all apostles. Our job is to bring people to Christ. Our first thing is, is to accept that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, and you accept him as your king so that you're saved. We get that choice. We do get that choice. We can either accept him or not. And then the second part, when you decide that you're going to be with them, your job whether it be small or large, is to bring people to them like you're doing here. And it's a wonderful thing to see what you guys are doing. So I just want to tell you that the Lord said something that I really picked up on. He said, when you do anything in my name, do it with excellence. And I tell you that we're going to do this with, 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 with the most excellence that we can. So that when people walk out, they're going to say, what a mighty God we serve. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. you got any questions or anything you can truly ask me? Amen. Go ahead. Can I tell them about the vision? Yeah. Yeah. The vision you have? Yeah. So, in the book, I, um, God actually spoke to me audibly. And you could read about what he said to me. He actually, I mean, in my ear, I heard it. Most of the times, he puts it on my heart. But when I was writing the book, and I was getting down to the end, and my computer flashes. Now, you got to understand something. i got to take you back about six months. I go to this preacher seminar, and I don't ever go to preacher seminars, you know. 
I know. For some reason, I'm there. And this one preacher's talking about how he wanted to be in the presence of the Lord. And he prayed. And he prayed. And finally, God answered him. And he said this electrical charge just came through his body. Didn't hurt, but it was so overwhelming, he couldn't handle it. Mm. I tell you that for a reason. My computer flashes. I look up at the ceiling. And I see this marquee, Patsy's Miracle. And I'm going, how can I see that? I got my eyes open. How do I see that? And then all of a sudden, my body starts to shake, tingle. There's electricity going all through me. He wanted me to know that he was pleased with what I was doing. And that was the grace that he gave me to be able to continue with the book and the screenplay. <laughs> so I just want to tell you, when God puts something on your heart, do it. Exactly. Don Curtis, though, he knows really well. And, you know, I told him faith without action is dead. <laughs> you can do all the talking you want. But if you don't do it, it's dead. Oh,